Hello YouTube friends. As we all know, we cannot directly light an LED with a 1.5 volt battery. We need a circuit that can boost the low voltage of the small battery. There are many voltage converters that could do the trick, but in this video we will analyze a simple and very famous circuit called the Joule Thief. If you don't know what a Joule Thief is, find a less lazy YouTuber than me who will explain it to you, or ask me in the comments, all I can tell you is that it is super easy to make and a fun circuit. In the next few minutes I will show you how to make two very simple and functional circuits. At the end of the video you will find all the schematics and some technical considerations. In the meantime, follow my YouTube and Telegram channels, because I want to quit my shitty job and make content for you all day long. For this project I used a BC3-3725 transistor, in my opinion one of the best for making a Joule Thief. As for the inductor, I took a different approach. Usually, in all the videos you can find online, people take a ferrite toroid and start wrapping copper wire around it by hand. Partly because I'm lazy and partly because I didn't have those components, I tried these axial inductors that you can find anywhere. Up close, they almost look like resistors. Then we definitely need the resistors. In this case I will use a 1 kilo ohm or 1 ohm resistor. Finally, it is time to take a look at the circuit and place all the components on the breadboard. And finally all the wires to complete the circuit. Two hours later. Here we go. I am excited. Now apply a voltage between 0.7 and 1.5 volts and the LED lights up. As always, nothing works on the first try. In these cases, I study the circuit for at least 10 minutes. Then I remove all the components from the breadboard and patiently start placing them again. First I connect the two inductors. One between the positive pole and the collector. The other one between the positive pole and the base of the transistor. Then I connect the resistor between the positive pole and the inductor connected to the base. The red wire joins the positive pole to the inductor connected to the emitter. Finally, I connect the negative pole to the emitter and the lead. And the positive pole from the collector to the lead. Now the LED is on. Everything in electronics is solved with patience. I tried to solder the circuit onto a small circuit board, but as you can see the result is not very pretty. Luckily my fantastic sponsor PCBWay sent me a fantastic gift. PCBWay is the perfect solution for your electronic projects. It offers PCB prototypes and assemblies at super low prices, with a simple and intuitive portal. Ideal for makers and engineers. See the link in the description for a $5 discount. Look how nice. The PCB looks clean and professional. It is almost impossible to go wrong with a professional board. Just transfer all the components from the board. Wave your magic wand and you're done. As if by magic, all the components were soldered together and even a battery popped up. Don't worry, in the description you'll find all the files for the 3D printed holder. And these fantastic magnetic connectors. As I promised at the beginning, I have another circuit to show you. This one is even simpler than the first. Imagine that you only need two components. An inductor and a QX5252F. 
The first time I saw this IC was when I was taking apart one of those cheap solar garden lamps. Looking at the datasheet, it seems that the QX5252F is designed to drive LEDs in small solar cells from 0.9 to 1.5 volts. Perfect for our purpose. This time the circuit is super easy. You only need to place two components on the breadboard. First the QX5252F. And then the inductor. Finally, as always, all the jumpers you need to make the circuit work. Done. All super easy and super fast. I can't believe it. Nothing works this time either. This sucks. Let's arm ourselves with patience and start again. Connect the inductor between the positive terminal and the LX pin of the QX5252F. Then use a jumper to connect the positive pole to the bat pin. Using another jumper, connect the LX pin to the positive pole of the LED. Now connect the negative pole to the VSS pin of the IC and the negative pole of the LED. Very good. We have done it again. Once again my fantastic sponsor PCBWay has sent me a gift. Look how beautiful these PCBs are. They are similar to the ones you have seen before, but a bit smaller. In a few seconds, I move the components from the breadboard to the PCB and that's it. As if by magic, everything is soldered in an instant. I like this board because it is small and minimal. Only two components. Plug in the power supply and everything works fine. And there is also a small switch on the back. Having reached this point, I have to tell you some boring technical stuff that I did not talk about in the video. For the first circuit I used the typical Joule Thief diagram, you can find it on Wikipedia. The inductors I used are 100 micro Henry. Sorry, but I need an Italian coffee now. As for the resistor, you can experiment. With a 1 ohm resistor I was able to light a LED with only 0.4 volt. A good result. Of course you can experiment to get your preferred result and write it down in the comments. In the description you will find all the links to the components, a link where I explain the project in more detail and a link where you can buy or download the board. Also drop me a line if you want a video of me analyzing the circuit with my fantastic 3 euro oscilloscope. I've run out of good video parts, so for this last part I'm going to put up random video clips. As for the second circuit, I'm not sure it's a jewel thief. In fact, it's definitely not. But since I saw this picture on Instructables.com, I got curious and wanted to try it. That's about it. Let me know in the comments if you want me to show you other jewel thieves with different circuits. Thank you for coming all this way. Thank you to my kind sponsor PCBWay and please remember to subscribe to my channel because I am poor. Bye.